All right, everybody. So what we are looking at here is phylogeny, which is all about the historical relationships of species. And particularly, we're going to be looking at how to make phy phylogenetic trees and cladograms based off of either molecular date evidence or traits. And it's hard to get into this without really bringing up this whole idea of Darwin. And um, we, I'll have another screencast here on just um, natural selection, which is again much of this early, these these theories early. That you know these are just observations that he made that individuals are different, and they're different, and traits get passed on from one generation to the next. And so this inherited variation is a big idea. And um, kind of getting into the idea that variation is not, um, things that happen in an organism's lifetime do not get passed on. Like learning does not get passed on. However, um, other parts get passed on. Um, and again, like what Darwin knew at that time, uh, there isn't as much, I mean, there is collaboration among scientists that, during that time, but the world is not, wasn't nearly as connected as it is today. So again, he made observations. They have a lot more offspring. They overshoot their carrying capacity than what will actually su survive. So the competition survival of the fittest, you know, um, the best um, suited for living will live long enough to reproduce. And then, so this is all basically the natural selection ideas. And this gets more into the speciation. And, you know, he's not the first one to say that things branch or change over time. And that there are older forms of the species that are alive today. And but one of the big things, again, that maybe he hits the most controversy about is this common ancestor, which that gets into a little bit of the tree of life types of things. Now, there wasn't molecular evidence back in the day, but based off of the relative dating of rocks, and again, there can be upheavals and things can get flipped around during different geologic events, but typically if you're going through the earth, the deeper layers of rock are going to be older and the ones closer to the surface are going to be newer. And then if they take a look at the fossil record within all of these, um, they can kind of say, okay, the fossils that were found in older rock um, existed before the fossils found in newer rock. And again, before Darwin's time, you had geologists um, making trees of life. But one thing that set Darwin's tree of life apart is this idea of a common ancestor. And there were trees of life before Darwin that branched from multiple origins. Um, and one thing that you guys should have and uh, within your vocabulary at least know about because it shows up quite a bit is this LUCA. What in the heck does that stand for? And that is the l last universal common ancestor. So again, Darwin kind of came up with this idea that all life sprung from one beginning and then it vari had variation from there. And again, those early things um, were based off of traits. <clears throat> so things that all swam and lived in the water were more related than things that lived on land. And those were different um, and less related to those things that had wings and flew. But over time, um, we start studying different traits. And just because something has wings doesn't mean it's, you know, a bat doesn't ne isn't more necessarily more closely related to birds than it is to other mammals. And the same thing with like dolphins and fish and stuff like that. And again, we have this branching 
uh, as things kind of split from a common ancestor, they branch off of the, the tree of life. Now, as genomes get developed and they sequence all of the DNA, they can look at actually comparisons in the similarities and differences in the DNA. So more recently, you have things like this. And again, that LUCA, that last universal common ancestor, would be in the center, and then it would wheel out from there. And as far as what you guys need to be able to do within biology is to be able to organize things based off of similarities and differences in traits and similarities and differences in molecules. And <clears throat> first of all here, let's kind of get into the difference here of cladograms and phylograms or phylogenetic trees. So cladograms, as far as the difference here, the length of the branches have no significance. It's just showing relation. So these two organisms are going to be more related to each other than they are to this branch. And these are going to be more related to each other than they are to this one. However, when you start seeing these things with different lengths, the order at which they split is important. But then if it's the length of these does matter and how long it is does show like how long they were sharing a common ancestor before you had a branch. Okay, so let's get after it. Um, oftentimes when you get into this kind of thing, you'll have a chart and then you have to make a model that shows the um, distinction between the different organisms. So we're going to start out kind of basic, and we're going to bring up this idea of derived characters. And these are traits that are evolutionary adaptations, and they fit into cladograms <clears throat> because everything beyond the trait also has that derived character. So if we take a look here, if you look at the chart, all of these organisms have a notochord. So the common ancestor had a notochord, but then this lancelet, which would be called the outgroup, is least similar to all of these others because the ancestor of all of these had a vertebrae. And these do not have a vertebrae, so they branched off of the common trunk of ancestry. As we keep on going here, we keep on looking at this. OK, so then lamprey also have vertebrae. But what separates all the rest of these from the lamprey? And that would be the hinge jaw. So since lamprey don't have a hinge jaw and all the rest do, they have split from this organism. And then this organism um, ultimately has a hinge jaw. But then the salmon branches off because it doesn't have four legs. And then from here, um, the rabbit has mammary glands, but the lizard does not. And that branches off. And then we could further branch from there. Now again, um, things change. And the idea that I want to instill here is that these um, cladograms or phylogenetic trees are hypotheses. And I'm going to hit that up on the, on the last slide. Because these have changed over time. As scientists learn more information or get more evidence, they've adapted these and changed them. So if you are given something like this, the positive means that it has the trait. The negative means it does not have the trait. Could we make a cladogram based off of this information? Again, as you get into this, and again, I'm going to show you examples from the AP tests that are much more um, complicated. But if we take a look at this, a lot of times we make that V structure like this. We branch off first the outgroup. So if we look back to here, this 
the common ancestor of all of these has eukaryotic cells. Okay, but this doesn't have any, the lancelet does not have any of the other um, derived characters, and therefore it is the outgroup. And then as you keep going, you keep branching these off because these do not have the same common uh, derived characters here. So again, this is the outgroup. Everything beyond this has a vertebral column. Everything beyond this point has jaws. Everything beyond this is four walking legs, and then we can branch this. Again, this is uh, pretty basic at this point, but it brings up the idea of derived characters. If a derived character um, is in between two lines, that means everything beyond that thing up the tree would have that derived character. If it, if an organism exists behind the derived character, it does not have that characteristic. Okay, so again, same basic thing. The hagfish is the outgroup because it does not have any common traits with all of the other organisms. This just adds a slight um, extra complication here because if we get down to these last three, they all have these common traits. The pigeon has feathers, but the mouse and the chimp have fur and mammary glands. So of these three, these two are more similar than to each other than they are to the pigeon because of looking at these pluses and minuses. So then that ends up looking like this, and we have an extra branch here. Um, and again, based off of just this information, the chimp could be here and the mouse could be here because they they both have those same traits. But this is branching off with the feathers. And notice the derived character is up here on this one because if you had put it here, you'd be saying that all of these further down the line would have feathers, which isn't true. This one has feathers, and therefore, um, it's put on this line instead of this line. Okay, so now getting into actual examples here. Pluses and minuses based off of presence of a character or a characteristic or an evolutionary adaptation. So if we just take a look at this, it's not this like all of these things have all of these and then you have this distinct outgroup. From this, you can still see which things are more similar. On AP, they often give you the tree, and you need to put them in the correct spot. And in this situation, you're supposed to um, provide justification for why certain things are related and why things aren't. So I'm just going to be quiet for a second, let you take a look at the chart, and try and figure out which three organisms belong here and which two organisms belong here. Okay, so let's take a look here. And if you said the cow, the horse, and the pig are part of the clade, or the part that has three in common, that would be correct, because all of them share the same characteristics. Whereas the human and the cat lack some characteristics and share the same similar ones, so then they would be lumped together. Part, either one of these would be correct here, and but providing the justification, you can have different justification and have it still be correct. So you could say this common ancestor has um, all of these, but then these are separated because they lost the casein and the protein B. This one, again, you could say the derived character that all of these share is the casein and protein B. So instead of talking about what they've lost, you can say what they contain. Okay, next one. With this one, again, it's going away from derived characters and it's going more into molecules. So if you are comparing the cytochrome C, which exists in all of these organisms, 
It is a protein that exists within all of these organisms. And you're looking at how many differences exist within that protein. If they're going to be more similar, they're going to have, are more closely related, they're going to have fewer differences in their protein or DNA structure. If they are distant re more distantly related, they would have more differences. So if they give you this area right here, and you have to predict what's going on each spot, you can see here there's an out group that is not very related to the other ones. And then you have two here that are related and two here that are related. So again, I'm going to give you just a second before I show you the answer here. If you can figure these out, this is how similar or different they are. You can go through this, see if you can figure out this chart and then where you would put them. All right, let's see if we can make some sense out of this. So if you look at this, this organism right here is our out group because it's very different. So compared to this organism, so these two would be right here, they have 21 differences. This one and this one have 18 differences. This one and this one have 17, and this one, and with this one, it has 20 differences. So it's very different, and that makes it the outgroup. Now, as you look at these numbers, which ones are more similar? So when you take a look at these two, they have 11 and 13 differences from this one, and they have 18 and 17, these two organisms have 18 and 17 differences from this. So they have similar numbers of differences. And when you compare them to each other, they only have three differences. Okay. And then if we start looking at this and this, they only have one difference. And when you compare them to the other ones, they have similar numbers of differences. This has 20 differences from this. This has 21 differences from that. So it's not terribly difficult to figure out that this one and this one, having only one difference, are closely related. And this one and this one having only three differences are closely related. So you know that they have to be on the same branch here, but which one goes where? Again, these are going to be most different from this because they are the ones that are 20 differences and 21 differences. So these are very the more different from the outgroup than these two are from the outgroup. So you would put these two on the middle and these two on the end. And it says here that it doesn't, you can have this one here and this one here, that doesn't matter. But they have to be on the right areas. Okay, Let's see if we can figure this one out. Again, what I 